Okay, so this is Frolic Films with Noise Complaint. So, how are you guys doing today? Good, good, good. Just practice, so we're all sweaty. We're sweaty boys. Yeah. <laughs> First question is, what are you guys' names, and what's your position in the band? Uh, I'm Nick. I play drums. I'm Jordan. I play guitar. I'm uh, Dave. I play the bass. I'm Dustin. I play guitar. How do you all know each other? There's a story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all know him. <laughs> we we know it through Jordan. But me and Jordan met a long time ago. We met at a birthday party one time a long time ago, and he had a it was like a real big fish shirt or something like that. Yeah, and we were like, "You like ska? No way! Yeah. You like ska?" Because we're like the only people in Chino who like ska. And then uh, I met Dave because Dave plays in a bunch of cool bands, and we played shows with his bands, and we networked like that. And me and Dustin were in a hardcore band together uh, about a year or two ago, two years ago. And uh, yeah, I just was like, "Hey, let's do this." And so we're doing it. How did you guys decide on the name Noise Complaint? Uh, so, I had a friend in high school, <clears throat> and he was one of the first people that I asked to do this band with me a while ago, before, like, it was like proto Noise Complaint. And uh, we didn't have a name for it yet, and we said we wanted to do punk. And I didn't know what to call it, because I'm not creative at all. And uh, my friend was like, hey, we should call it Noise Complaint. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. And so I just kept that name since like 2009, and we just used it since. That's so funny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I tried to do the band since like 09, and we just barely started doing like cool stuff. Like, two years ago. Yeah. What genre would you classify your sound as? Should we give a joke answer? Or I don't know. Meme-core. Like, <laughs> yeah, meme-core. <laughs> Melodic meme-core. We play a ska core. So make sure Melodic ska core. For people who don't know, it's ska and hardcore punk mixed together. Who are some influences? <laughs> Black Flag. <laughs> Gorilla Biscuits. <laughs> Choking Victim. We all like like weird stuff. He loves like... Uh, tragedy. I love... I mean, Choking Victim, the whole leftover crack sound. Yeah, I guess crack like... Rock all of us but yeah. Dustin, I think, agree on Choking Victim and leftover crack, yeah. right? All the Crack Rock City bands. At least, at least with this project for me, it's a lot of that influence coming yeah. from there because... yeah. Choking, I, I'm okay with Choking Victim. I'm just not, I'm not okay with leftover crack. A lot of people are like that, though. Okay. Uh, Chucky McDowell, Left Over Crack, Stupid Stupid Henchman, Nikon's Indicay, Morning Glory, Dance Hall Satan, all those good Crack Rock City bands. There's a too many to name. They invested a lot. Yeah. I, but I do really like Rancid and Rancid's Operation cool. Ivy. So. Oh, the best one. The best band of all time, Operation Ivy. I think we've all got, like, really different backgrounds, though. Yeah. Most of things. Because, like, I grew up listening to, like, Third Wave Ska and, like, Blink, like, really poppy stuff. And you grew up listening to like punk, right? Yeah, like hardcore and stuff. But yeah. I grew up listening to some very trashy punk and sludgy street punk and all that stuff, really, like, in a very ignorant state of it, I guess. That's where I kind of grew, but then I grew into more stuff. But, like, yeah, we're just, I'm, we're all just influenced by many things. Yeah. Well, that's good that you guys can all put that, like, sound together. Yeah. It's all aggressive music, so it all fits together. As long as we're pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. as long as the angst never dies, exactly. it'll always be. What are the main themes or topics for most of your songs? Um, I write the lyrics. Yeah, I write the lyrics. Uh, it depends. I I firmly believe that if you're gonna make music, you're gonna make art. You should. It's it's a powerful like tool, so you should use it responsibly. And I do think that if you're gonna say something, you should say something worthwhile and worth saying. So a lot of stuff I write, I super influenced by Operation Ivy, like I geek out over. So I like a lot of Jesse Michaels' lyrics are about like social justice issues and political issues and stuff like that. So I guess traditional punk topics. Um, see something wrong and you write a song about it to explain why it's wrong and hopefully you inspire change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think these topics will change over time? Uh, what do you guys think? I think everything changes over time. I don't think you can be the same or say the same thing over and over without wanting to shoot yourself in the foot. So yeah, I think definitely, I just think overall, like, just to answer that question in general, that question is just, yeah, everything will change eventually. So, I mean, there's bands that I say that, like, oh, we'll sound the same forever, they don't. And I don't think we're any different, so there will definitely be some changes in the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like as like bands mature and stuff. Yeah. Like I do think like the the basic topics though don't change. Like the basic messages of like anti racism, anti homophobia, um, stuff like that. Like anti police. Like those messages will always stay punk. 
no matter what generation it is, I think it'll always be there. I guess to say they'll just be said in different ways. Yeah, exactly. that's, I guess that's what I was really trying yeah, to say. No, sure. And also trying to pull in the sound of the music too. Yeah. Because I think, I don't know, some, I see some bands will like change, go to the topic with how the music sounds. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't write a really upbeat song and talk about some really new shit. Well, I mean, there's a lot of crazy, but. Yeah, you know, the, the, the subject stay the same, I think. Yeah. Like, when did noise complaint form? So, uh, yeah, I've been trying to do this since I was like a freshman in high school. Uh, so, like 2009, 2010, I started writing music and I didn't have a band to play it with. I just had it. And uh, probably around 2011 like, to 2012, I, I met some people at uh, in high school. And um, completely different than these people, actually. And we just started playing shows and recording music. and. Members change gradually and come and go, but uh, I try to keep it going. And so, yeah, probably about like solidly doing stuff for probably about like five years now. How old are you guys? Um, twenty-four. Wait, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I never know my own age. <laughs> I'm like twenty-three. And yeah, and people like me now, so I'm twenty-four. There you go. I'm yeah. twenty-one. I'll be twenty-seven in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> How has your music evolved since you first began playing music together? Um, like well, you guys together. Oh, all of us? Like this incarnation of Noise Complaint or like since like the beginning of Noise No, Complaint? since like you guys. Oh. Um, well, us together have only really been in a group for about a year now, right? Um, counting Dave, it's only been a few months. Yeah, hey, Dave's only been in the band for a few months. But with Dustin, it's only been like a year. Yeah, maybe. Like, it's been two years. Two years. So, how's it changed? I mean, when Nick joined, I said all the old songs from the old people, and we just I taught him those songs, and then as he joined and as he joined, and definitely since he joined, we started writing new material, and um, I guess because of a lot of different influences, it's different sounding, how do I describe it? It's, well, okay, so earlier on, I would say that it sounded a little bit more metal, yeah, and metal way metal. more like... Crack rock Scott. But that was like the influence of the members. Because yeah. right. you had a metal drummer, yeah, exactly. like a crack exactly. rock bassist, yeah. and then Jordan. Your last then... bassist was a crack rock? No, no like crack rock said. Right over And then, like, when, when the we drummer. did the second EP, it was right. me, you, and then we had the other guys, and like we had yeah. a very poppy bassist. Yeah. Like, and, and that's when I got really into it. Yeah, and Dustin yeah. was in the band, and it was a little bit more aggressive, but still, like, very poppy and melodic, which explains, like, the happier songs yeah. we have now. And now that it's the four of us, it's a lot more aggressive, I think. Mm -hmm. For me, I saw them... Be, I, I had played with them before I even joined the band with my other bands, like Jordan had mentioned earlier. And to me, when I saw Noise Complaint for the first time, I was like, this is cool, crack, rock, steady beat music that's actually done well in my area. Because honestly, I've heard it at other bands, I was like, oh, they're good. No, fun. but then I played with this and I'm like, hey, these guys are fun. These guys are good, they don't give a shit. Not in that so much of a stamp, but... As far as like the aesthetics and everything, it just it was all about just the music, and I felt that through the performance. So when Jordan asked me to join the band, I was like, you know what? I really enjoyed like what I hear and what you guys are about. So yeah, sure, why not? What has been your biggest challenge as a band? Um, biggest challenge as a band. I think the biggest <laughs> challenge is that uh, I mean, ska is like commercially viable music, and that's not why we do it. But it is definitely harder to get known playing ska music and punk in general. Um, so I think the challenge is definitely getting out there and being successful while also being underground and sticking to DIY ethics. Um, it's kind of fine, like an uphill battle, but I think it's way more rewarding doing that. Yeah, it's really hard to play ska and people not think like, oh, you play No Doubt music? Like, yeah, everything's like real big fish. Yeah, yeah <laughs> No like, Doubt music. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, if you don't come I get Boston all the time. It's kind of yeah. like, I don't know, people expect it, you know? Like, oh, you're from Chino? What the fuck? But, it's also really cool though, playing ska, because it's one of those scenes that you don't even think about existing still. Um, yeah, you always hear about like the hardcore scene, you hear about like punk scenes and stuff like that. But there is a network of ska bands yeah, throughout sure. the country, yeah. and like in touring over the past years. Yeah. It's yeah. like we've met a bunch of like really cool people yeah, after ska, sure. and like sure. you wouldn't never even thought they were there. Yeah, it's like totally still alive. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta have to go to show. Still alive is a great place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shows, still really. Alive. I think that's where a lot of people fail too. It's like, I can't find any events. Well, have you gone to any local shows? Yeah, it's because it's, like, it's not that hip new genre yeah. that people, it just doesn't get as much coverage. What makes your band different from other bands you know or played with? 
I think the musical aggression. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, not super common in ska. But, well, I mean it is, but not like around here, I think. Um, Something like that. Yeah, I agree. The music, like, no one plays like ska core, like, like the stuff we play, like Croc Rock City or whatever. Like, there's like bands across the country and across the world who play it, but there's no like scene of bands like us, so it's kind of hard finding like minded bands. Well, like I, I think ska core, now when people think of it, at least. And when I think of it, it's like more like Latin based, you know, yeah. they, got, they sing yeah. Spanish a lot more, you know. That's almost It's got a lot to do with the Latin, like the Latin punk community, I guess, mm -hmm. more in LA and stuff. And when they're like, oh, you're Scott Core, they automatically think, yeah. I feel like that's how it is now. Yeah. Just as, as the time being, I don't think it'll always be like that, but it's just, oh, yeah, you guys sing in Spanish? Like, no, no, no. And it's like, oh, okay, well, you said you were Scott Core. I was like, I was like, well, you just play Scott with metal, you know, just think of it that way. It's just, it's just Scott with breakdowns or fast parts. It's how I see it. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it also kind of follows, like, what Leftover Crack and all those people were doing, too. Hardcore. You know, hardcore and Scott, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think that's what Leftover Crack was always to me, too, though. Yeah. Because when I heard them, it was, like, the first of its kind that I've ever heard of that music. Like, I hadn't heard anything prior to when they were coming out. Yeah. So, I mean... I mean, because, like, if you look at old, like, flyers, you'll see, like, Operation Ivy playing, like, Gang Green or, like, old 80s hardcore bands, like... Boston's were Hendrix in the hardcore scene and we were ska band, so yeah, that's true. That doesn't really have any more like people who mix hardcore and ska. So um, also to answer your question about what makes us different, I think is our ethics and what we do as a band because we try our very best to do only all ages shows. We book our own shows. We don't deal with like janky promoters. Like we don't rip people off. We just do what we do because we want to do it and we don't care about like the money or. And, and that's kind of cliche, but I mean, it's true. And um, yeah, we don't like playing. I don't like playing like 21 up bar shows. I think those shows suck. I think uh, it's not for the music, it's for the money. Yeah. We usually just play to drunk people anyway. Yeah. yeah. There's like no point. Yeah. We try to like book shows for like touring bands that come through also. Like, because we want the same thing for us. Because it's cool when we go on tour and people help us out. So we want to do the same and return the favor. Yeah. And after a while, it's kind of like you just get to see your friends. Yeah, you gotta make new friends and yeah. it's like a family reunion. It's, it's cool. like they come over and it's like, hey, we get to hang out! Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Do you guys prefer venue shows or backyard shows? Uh, we haven't had the worst experience ever with backyard I shows. I prefer well ran shows. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't it care. It doesn't matter the space as long as like it's good. It doesn't fall apart. Yeah. Because really. yeah. there's like notorious backyard shows yeah. that sometimes just blow up yeah. because poor planning. Yeah. But that doesn't mean all backyard shows are bad. But we tend to stick to more like structured venues, I think. Like DIY spaces. It's yeah, DIY spaces, venues, or like storefronts. It's tricky because if you go back east, they have more basements, so it's easier to throw DIY shows because you throw a basement show, you don't get a noise complaint. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't. I mean, you don't. Like, <laughs> throw in a laugh sound bite there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but out here in California, we don't have basements, we have backyards. So. I admire the DIY ethic of throwing backyard shows because you do it yourself. That's awesome. That's what we talk about. At the same time, all of them do it kind of shittily. That's a word. And Dude! <laughs> I have a story for you about okay. that later. They get, so. they, get, like, they get laid in, like, they don't do a good job, like, managing it, like, two bands playing and the cops break it up. Like, those shows suck. Yeah, to get a noise complaint. Or the neighbor they show. They like, nah. Yeah, so it's like, it's hard. I mean, we played backyard shows that were awesome. Yeah, get we played video shows that suck. It's just, it depends on whoever's running the show. It's really the deciding factor. We had, a, like, a year-long streak where every time we played a backyard show, it was halfway through our set, always us, that the cops came to shut yeah. down. Yeah. That happened in my garage. Yeah. 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 We played this garage a noise complaint. Yeah, before I was in the band, I threw a garage show, and I put them in it. It's always a hardcore show with them. And like the during the set, yeah, it was us. We were the one that fucking ruined it for everyone. <laughs> Name's a curse, I guess. I don't know. Any news you would like to share regarding upcoming albums or shows? Yeah, hell yeah, we do. Uh, you tell. Um. Okay. Well, we're working on a new album. Do you know when that's going to be released? Next year, sometime. <laughs> Probably. Real soon. Hopefully. We're trying to take our time and make sure it's like good music. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, that was the last question. Oh, cool. Thank you for your time. Thank you.